the time has come, the walrus said. Hey, Sorla, Sorla, la, la. I got the pendant of courage. Oh, you got the pendant of courage? Now I will tell you more of the legend. What, did you not trust me before? What's the deal? Three or four generations ago, an order of knights protected the royalty of the Hylia. These knights of Hyrule were also guardians of the pendant of courage. Unfortunately, most of them were destroyed in the great war against evil that took place when the seven wise men created their seal. Among the descendants of the knights of Hyrule, a hero must appear. I see. Jockey, I believe you. You should get the remaining pendants and carry this with you. This is a treasure passed down by the families of the wise men. I want you to have it. So we get the Pegasus Shoes. You can now execute a devastating dash attack. Hold A for a short time. A helpful item is hidden in the cave on the east side of Lake Hylia. Get it! Cave on the east side of Lake Hylia. I think he's talking about the Ice Rod, but we already got that. Um, but yes, now we got the Pegasus Boots, which is one of the best items in any Zelda game ever. Uh, it allows us to dash forward with an attack in front of us, so we're safe. And we can move much faster through Hyrule. I love the Pegasus Boots. We get by so much faster, we can easily cancel out of it by just hitting the D-pad. In case we uh, want to get out of our dash by some chance. And yeah, we can just dash on through. Take that, bow guy. Oh. Take- oh. Uh, I guess our shield is no longer up if we try to use the dash. But now that we can travel through Hyrule so much faster, it's so nice. Again, I just love this item. And there's an area where we need to use it to get to the next pendant, because that's kind of our main goal now, is getting all those pendants. I mean, check it out, you can just dash through all these bushes and just get rewards, just like that. Also, we can break open these rocks. Uh, specifically the ones that are, like, bulged up of five. And it looks like this is just for a little fairy fountain, okay. We need to head kind of back to Kakariko Village, which... I can go south, yeah. It's actually, we're not heading exactly back to Kakariko, we're heading a little south of Kakariko. And, uh, I want to look for the library where we had that book we couldn't reach. Because Link can't just climb up a shelf, um, or maybe shake it a bit. We have to use the magical Pegasus Boots item to <laughs> knock the book off the top. And here we go, we get the, uh, what is this? The Book of Mudora. You can use it to read the ancient language of the Hylia. The Book of Mudora is kind of a, a key item. It's not exactly something we use in combat or anything. <laughs> kind of like the mushroom, I, I guess. But that's a weird comparison, isn't it, now? Uh, as you can see, the Pendant of Power, I believe that is, is just south of us now. We have to use a bit of an opening down there to get to it, so I gotta do a bit of backtracking. And you might think, well, can't you get any Pendant in any order you want? Like the dungeons of the first Zelda game, or like a few things in Zelda 2? No, we have to do it in a specific order, which I actually don't mind. I do kind of wish they told us the order we had to do things. Uh, he just kind of marked both pendants on the map and said, okay, go get him, without explaining that, yeah, we have to get this next one first. And that's because in order to enter the dungeon, we need the Book of Medora. We can't get into the other dungeon right now with our current equipment, no matter what. So, yeah, uh, desert time. Oh, hello. There seem to be stumps in the ground here that we just can't do anything about. We can't move them or anything. Link, hold on. Stop it, Link. What are you doing? Link! Oh, this video just got a content age restriction, didn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute, did the water fill back up? Interesting. Uh, maybe it's temporary? We have a whole bunch of rocks over here. Uh, hi! Um, pay no attention to the average middle-aged man standing by this sign. Leave him alone. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have no memory of that, but sure. I love humorous moments like that throughout the Zelda series. It really does have a cute little charm to it, doesn't it? Games like Ocarina of Time would really run with that, just like that kind of humorous tone. Uh, but here we are in the desert, there's these vultures we gotta watch out for. Stay away from me! Yeah. <laughs> He's just circling in on us and I don't like it. I'm still alive, you bastard! There's a lot of traps here in the dungeon. There's clearly some kind of stone there, but we can't get there yet. And a cave up here, I might as well check this out. Hello? Oh. Oh, it's the Elder Sorosolala. Aha, it's the Book of Medora. With it, you can read the language of the Hylia people. Oh, I guess you're not the Elder Sorosolala. You're just some other old guy who looks exactly the same. Well, at the very least, we can bomb this here, head on down. And what do we have here? Oh, another piece of heart. We've got two out of four for those now. That's very nice. Oh, there's clearly some sort of tongue creature up there. There's a few entrances here in the desert. But we need to go up this stairway here, leading to the, des the dungeon itself. And, uh, uh, Dr. Fate, I think I need you as the translator. No, but in reality, this is what the Book of Medora is for, which is why we need it to get in this dungeon, which is why we need to beat the first dungeon before we can do this one, because we couldn't get the Book of Medora without the Pegasus Boots, which we get for being the first dungeon. I, it's kind of a smart way of ordering things, you know? Anyway, to open the way to go forward, make your wish here and it will be granted. Oh. 
our wish is to go in the dungeon? Can't we just wish this whole problem solved, I guess? What exactly are we doing? I don't know, Link's singing his heart out, and I appreciate it. But, uh, we reorder these statues so that, uh, we can head to the dungeon, but we can no longer go back. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I guess this is a bit of a one-way trip, isn't it? Here we are in the dungeon itself. This is the Sand Temple. Uh, this place is pretty tough. Mainly because of the enemies. We have these guys who shoot lasers at us. We cannot kill them, no matter what. <laughs> That's no fun. But they're not the only problem. We also have guys coming up from the sand right there who shoot laser beams at us. What's with all the lasers? I do like that the palaces have a bit more of aesthetic to them now. I mean, this is like a cool deserty themed place. Whereas in the first two Zelda games, it was like, this is palace number six. This is palace number eight. Most of the palaces look pretty much the same in those games with a bit of a color palette swap is all. Oh. Uh, we found a secret here. We found the map! Nice! I really don't remember my way through this place, so I'm just kinda... feeling this whole thing out. Seeing what I can see. Uh, ooh, is this a mini-boss? Oh no, it's just a barrage of enemies, okay. Let's get a spin attack ready. Eh, oh! <laughs> damn it. There we go. Was there any purpose to that? I don't think there was. Oh, well we need a small key for there. Um, ow! And we have an exit here. Uh, this leads to the statue here, which serves no purpose. I'm gonna go back in. I guess that's one way to go back in case you want to, since you uh, can't go back the way you came with the statues all moved around. Oh, there's a small key up there. Give me that. Oh, watch out for the laser. Uh, it is I, sort of. You must never fail to find all the treasure in each dungeon. You got it. You know, that's one thing I like about them making a lot of the dungeon items, like, required to beat said dungeon, or beat said dungeon boss, is that it means you aren't missing anything like you sometimes do in Zelda 1 or 2. Like, oh shit, I forgot the book. Or, oh shit, I forgot the candle. Now I can't see in this cave. And going through over here, we have the compass. All right. I think I gotta kill all these enemies while being wary of the guy in the middle. Whew. You'd think with a big eye like that, you could maybe shoot him in the eye with the bow. No, there's just no way to kill him. I really wish there was, and... Oh dear, some cannonballs shooting along here? We got ourselves a big key, we need that. So now we go back to the other side of the dungeon. There's a couple rooms I haven't been in yet. I think I know where I need to go at this point. Uh, along here... And then maybe in this door on the left? Over here... Oh boy. Where's the switch? Oh! Watch out, Link! Go, go, go! He's gonna get me! Oh! There we go, finally found the switch. Get out of there, Link. And here we have our treasure, which is the Power Glove. You can feel strength in both your hands. You can pick up and carry stones now. So yeah, those weird rocks throughout Hyrule, we can now pick those up. Oh, get the switch. Which means we can progress through the dungeon. Uh, really, there's nothing stopping us now from heading after the boss. If we go ahead and look at the map of the dungeon, by the way, you'll notice we're in the basement floor, and there's actually a, a first floor that we're supposed to get to. That's kind of a weird way of putting it, because it's not exactly correct. Um, I, I guess I'll just show you. This dungeon has an interesting mechanic where we actually exit the dungeon and go back in, in, uh, here. Yeah, we actually exit out of the dungeon here, we're back in the overworld. We can go down here, where we find a piece of heart. We're at three of those now, nice. And then we go back up, and now, uh, you can see this is kind of like the main entrance to the boss area with that big scary, uh, three-eyed monster marking on the door. Uh, and yeah, we can't do that unless we have the Power Glove, which we got in the previous part of the dungeon. The Power Glove is passive, by the way. We don't have to have anything equipped in order to pick up those rocks. Take notes, Link's Awakening. Do I have to push one of these? Oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Here we have a room where the tiles themselves are trying to kill us. The evil forces in Hyrule take many forms, but this is rather unexpected. We're on to the second floor now. Uh, yeah, that, that was a weird way of kind of portraying we have a first floor and a second floor of... Well, <laughs> having a completely different area we have to go into from outside the dungeon. 997 rupees. Hey, we're almost at the max. We might just make it there before the end of the dungeon. Ooh, there we go. Yep, and we're at the max just like that. Oh, I'm getting lasered to high hell. Get that key, Link, and get out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and equip the ice rod just in case. Also, uh, we have another room where the tiles are trying to kill us. In these rooms, uh, the tiles do eventually run out. They form like a skull and crossbones symbol. We don't need to wait for them to run out, and I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna get the hell out of here, because all we need to do is find the key. Oh, we have one of these guys. Oh, looks like I need the bow and arrow for that. One, two, there we go. And now we need our lantern. We need to light all four of these to unlock a secret passageway. 
Which clearly is locked off by the boss key, but I mean, what's even the point? We, we physically can't get here without the item, which is also locked off by the boss key. It's kind of a weird mechanic if you ask me. And into the boss room we go, we have uh, some centipede dudes. I actually really don't like this boss. I have a hard time hitting them while they're in the air like that. You really have to specifically aim for their head. And the worst part for me is that when they emerge from the sand, they explode uh, four different projectiles diagonally. I didn't notice that when I first played this and I was like, what the hell's hitting me? The best method for them is the swords. Of course, they don't really have us use the power glove in this boss fight because it's a passive item. There's not really much we can do with it. Unless we like picked up the centipede and threw them. And my god, I'm just getting pushed all over the place, aren't I? We can use the ice rod and the bow, but it's rather difficult to get them... Oh, I did it there. Oh, damn it. Because you have to hit specifically their head. And they're always moving. We got one of them. Take that. And that. Haha, just one of them left. And now that they're in kind of an angry mode, I think they're gonna explode into more rocks when they come up. So we gotta be careful for that. Oh, yep, look out for that link. There we go, got him. Nicely done. Another heart container. Man, we got a lot of life. And we got ourselves the Pendant of Power. Appropriate considering this place had the Power Glove in it. Not the Nintendo accessory, but something else, I guess. You won the Pendant of Power. Your goal of finding three pendants is in sight. Go for the last one. Hey, you got it. We're teleported out of the dungeon, just like always. And off we go to find the next one. 